Hey, this is Martin Brennan from Imagineer Systems, and today we're going to be looking at how to get rid of small annoying marks in our footage that will get in the way of our ordinarily great visual effects shots. Okay, so here we have the shot in question. Here we have a nice shot of a pan and a car here, and we're going to put some visual effects into the back. But unfortunately, some speck of dirt, or possibly insect, has managed to end its life right in the middle of our windscreen here. So we need to get rid of this speck so that it doesn't distract the viewer from the visual effects that we're going to be putting in the background. Now these dirt specks down here I don't mind too much because they add a little bit of grit to the scene, but this one here is actually quite distracting. So let's get rid of it. The easiest way to do this is to draw a mask around this shape, track the background, and then remove the spot with the mask. We can do this in Mocha Pro's Remove tool, and surprisingly enough, the only bit that's going to be difficult is actually masking this little spot out to begin with. The rest is really, really simple. So let's get started. Now, normally with a shot like this, I just tell you to go straight ahead and draw a mask around it and track it. But this mark is actually kind of difficult because it's sitting on the windscreen of the car and then it's sort of fading in and out with the texture in the background and there's also motion blur on the camera, so it's actually almost impossible to track this by itself. Now, we could go ahead and try and track it and then adjust the track, or we could draw a mask around the shape and then just hand animate it, but I'm going to do a little bit of a shortcut here just so that I can speed up getting this mask done. What I'm going to do is just zoom out a little bit and then track the car bonnet down here. So I'm going to find a nice large section where I can start from, which is about here. So I'm going to draw a big shape around the car bonnet, And I'm only going to track translation, so I'm going to turn off scale, which turns off everything else. So let's just tighten that up a little bit. And we can start tracking this. Okay, so that's all tracked. Now I've gone back and tracked backwards from the point I drew the spline to, just so I get the entire tracking data. Now, those of you familiar with Mocha will actually realise that this is a fairly unconventional thing to do, because this bonnet is actually not planar to the dot I'm trying to get rid of. But in this case, I'm not actually trying to get a piece of solid tracking data, I'm just trying to get a bit of assistance tracking data so I can actually remove this small spot here. So now that I've done this rough track, I'm actually literally going to call it rough track. I'm going to turn it off so I don't have to see it anymore. And then I'm going to draw a small shape around our little mark here. So I'm just going to draw a simple four-point shape. I'm going to right-click and smooth out all those tangents, just so we get a nice oval around this little mark here. We can be fairly rough because it's a nice broad texture we've got behind this mark. And then I'm going to link this layer to my rough track. So let's call this something important. Let's call this mark remove and now let's play back and see what we've got now that's linked so you can see that it's not actually covering the mark completely but we're getting pretty close so it's going to save us a lot of time when we go and now hand animate this mask so let's start doing that now I'm going to probably speed this up so you don't have to watch me slowly mask out a shot but you can see how that tracking data has just helped a little bit it's not done it completely but it's given us a lot more information than just having to do it by hand so let's go fix it up now Okay, so that's done. So hopefully you enjoyed that really, really speedy view of me masking that out there. So now when I play this back, we can see that's actually following on pretty well. So we've got assisted tracking data just following that little mark all the way through the shot. We can double check this by turning on our mats and turning off our little coloured matte paint bucket here. And we can just test to make sure that that's actually cut out correctly. So that's looking pretty okay. So I'm going to turn off my mats now. And so that's actually the hard bit done. We've done our mask around our little spot now. So the final thing we have to do is track our background. So I'm just going to draw a small shape for that. Let's just draw around the middle here. I'm only drawing a small shape for the moment because I only need to track a small amount of data. So I'm going to put that below our mark remove because it's behind our mark. And I'm going to call this Sky Background, or BGD for short. And I'm just going to, again, 
I'm going to keep shear on just in case there's a little bit of shear in this. Uh, but for the most part, because this sky is so far away, we can probably get away without doing any perspective. So I'm going to start tracking that now, and we'll come back when it's done. Okay, so that's finished tracking now. You can see here I've tracked through the whole shape, and we can see that mask uh, shape floating on top of our background. You can also see if uh, I just drag to this middle point here, that I've just animated that shape up a little bit as the track's gone past, because we don't want this car to interfere with the overall background shape. So now what we need to do is make sure our background spline actually physically covers the entire area that this mask is floating around. So if we just select our shape here, I'm going to go through and just see where that mask is floating to. And you can see it floats out here in about frame 84, so I'm going to actually drag my shape out a little bit more. Now if I just, for, for example, select my keys, we can see here that I've got a couple of keyframe shapes where I animated my mask to avoid the car. So in order to stretch out this and not have to animate every single keyframe, I'm going to use the Uber key to stretch out my mask. So the Uber key is over here next to our Auto key, and I'm just going to click on that and you can see it turns blue. What the Uber key will do is it will allow me to actually animate the entire spline and that one movement will actually affect all my keyframes in the shot. So if I drag this out like this, now when I move forwards, that shape will stay that way through here out the shot, even when it starts to move throughout these parts. If I just undo that for a second, and go back to the original spot, and go back to Auto instead, you'll see the difference. So if I just drag this out without selecting Uber Key, and now go through, you can see how that's animating back to that keyframe I set to avoid the car. So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to undo that again, select my Uber Key, and drag that out again just so that we cover our bases here. Now it's very very important to turn off your Uber key again. Always go back to auto because if you do any more roto frames or shape frames you are going to have that affect the entire keyframe set for your spline. So now let's just drag through and make sure our spline is covering completely the area we need to. And we can see there it is. In fact it's actually probably covering a little bit too much so I'm going to actually shorten it down a bit. So I'm going to press that Uber key again, drag back a little bit, press my Auto key again, and now that mask is in a nice tight little shape, not being affected by the car, but also covering the entire area. So that's that section done. Now the thing to remember with the Remove tool is that you do need planar information behind the mark you're trying to remove because we need to be able to analyze the shot and use the tracked information to help do the removal in the foreground. If you don't have enough information in the background, you may need to paint a clean plate or mask out foreground elements to stop them from obscuring your background, and there's a lot of different techniques that you can use. We have a few different tutorials on this available on the website at imagineersystems.com slash videos. So now we have the easy bit. I'm just going to click on my mask, move over to the Remove tool, and I'm going to turn off the cogs for the sky background and the rough track, because we don't need to see those. Just select my Mark Remove. We can keep our stuff at default here, because this is a nice easy remove, we don't have to optimize any of this, and I can just start rendering forwards. And it will start cleaning this mask out of the shot. If I turn off my overlays, we can actually see how that's going. And you can see as it's rendering through those, it's cleaning it up quite nicely without too much difficulty. So I'm going to let this finish rendering and we'll look at the final result. Okay, so here we are after the render's done. So we can see here the mark is now completely gone. If I turn my overlays back on, we can see that that mark has been followed around by the mask in that background tracking area. And it's been following through and removing that mark out of the shot completely. So if we turn those overlays off again, we can have a look. And let's have a look at the original again. So we can see that nasty little mark floating through our track here. And then we can look back at our remove again. Nice and clean without any distractions. So that's how you can remove annoying marks inside Mocha Pro. We just mask out our annoying area, we track the background to make sure that we've got background to remove from, and then we use the remove tool to just wipe it out completely. For more on the Remove tool or any of our features inside Mocha Pro and Mocha AE, go check out the website at imagineersystems.com. If you have any questions, you can ask on the forum at forum.imagineersystems.com, 
or you can check out Facebook at facebook.com slash Imagineersystems.